for uh, drying either seaweed or, or, or meat. You can hang and dry. I'm drying my, my uh, loincloth. <laughs> So that actually brings up a good point is um, I had a teacher who told me his dad bought him a car when he was 16, but he made him take apart every screw of the car into a bunch, like a million different pieces and put it back together. Wow. And then <laughs> that increased his appreciation for oh. any object <coughs> right. or anything. Right. So can you talk about the amount of work you do and then like your appreciation of that? Yeah, I absolutely have a lot of um, appreciation for handmade. Okay. This is a clay pot I made. Now, and I have juniper berries in it, <laughs> full juniper berries, which are edible. This species is, this is California juniper. Um, anyways, this clay pot or bowl or cup, whatever you want to call it, this is one of my first, I think this is my first successful clay pot. And I say successful because uh, this one holds water, it does not leak. And so I made this pot a, almost a year ago. And it's my first successful one. Um, this is made from clay that I found right there by my hut. Um, I had no idea how to make clay pottery. I did a lot of research online and in books, and I really never found like a really good formula because it varies. Clay is different in different parts of the world, and it's 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 managed or, or made differently. So I had to experiment a lot until I finally figured out how to how to do it. And I fired this in a bonfire, and. Um, but a lot of work has gone into this. This I actually did a little bit of carving. I don't know if you can see the insignia here, but this is a Maya symbol. And that's a Maya symbol for Jaguar. Jaguar and Mayan is, well, it depends on the dialect, but Balam or Bolom. And I put the date that I made it on the back. <laughs> it's in Maya, old Maya glyphs. So um, it probably took me, because this is one of my first pieces, it took me a, a few hours to make this. <laughs> and uh, so it's very special because I put in a lot of time. And many of the projects I do are a lot of time. And so I now have, like this is, this, this cost me nothing, zero money. The only thing it cost me was time. You know, and so often if you buy something, if you pay, like if you were to buy this in, in a country like Mexico, you would probably pay a, a couple dollars, you know, it was, it was, it had zero cost. It was labor, cheap labor. And if you broke it, it, it would mean nothing to you, but the hands that make it, it to them, it's very valuable. <laughs> so I really love this and I can make another one, but it's just the fact that I made it with my hands and it took so much time. It's very special for that reason. What are some other things you made? And like almost in chronological order. So the very first things I used to make was cordage. I, I was I learned how to do this a few years ago and I just got addicted to it and started. I'm like, this is a very useful material. Anytime you're out camping or whatever, you have to have some kind of rope. It's just an essential item. And so learning how to make it was very important to me. Think about anytime you go camping, you use rope. You're using rope to tie down your tent or so many useful things. Uh, so I wanted to learn that. What are all the uses you've had with it? The cordage? Uh -huh. I have used it mainly, I mean, right now I've got like a stockpile of it that I've just been making. But I've used it for, in, like for instance, the construction of my hut. It's used to um, hold the, the roof, the poles together. To, like the, the poles uh, come across like this and they cross each other. And so it's, it's bound at the top right there in the middle by cordage that I made. And also I use it for tying down the thatch material. It's all held down by cordage. But I've used it also for making a bow drill for making fire. It's um, excellent for that. It, uh, I haven't used it for trap making, but I intend to do that. You can make a noose and, and, and make traps. But um, other than that, you know, I mean, I, this would be a great clothes hanger or for uh, drying either seaweed or, or, or meat. You can hang and dry. Drying my my uh, loincloth. <laughs> fishing. I haven't used it for fishing yet. Uh, well, actually, I've tried, but um, you're at a bit of a disadvantage because it's so visible in the water. It does not compare to monofilament line that's used in the modern era. Um, oh, actually, in using these fibers, I have um, 
placed them like in a coconut shell, taking a coconut shell, the part that had where you have the hole for uh, you drink the coconut oat milk or coconut water from. Anyway, if I've used, I used those as a funnel. So you got half the coconut shell with the hole at the bottom and I'll use, make this, I just cross these fibers and I kind of stuff them into the hole and then it acts as a strainer for straining liquids. And so I've used it like, I, I ferment uh, drinks, I make fermented drinks in a container and um, and then I'll pour it through the strainer that's made with this. How many of the things, things did you learn and how many did you just kind of discover while you were on the, the spot? Um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the things are related, you know, like, um, I mean, I mean, cordage making, it took me a long time to learn how the technique I, I just, I don't know. I just didn't find information, uh, good information online that really specified, showed how to do it well. And so I did a lot of trial and error. And so, I mean, at first I was doing like a braid method. I mean, no one taught me, but I would braid it like, like, like a, a mother would braid her child's hair and, and that worked, but it was just, it was a lot slower. Um, so that was a lot of things I learned by experimenting. Like when I first made my, my first Adobe brick, I really didn't, know how to do adobe i mean i assumed what it was made out of dirt and i don't know what else i kind of had an idea that there was dirt and straw at least and so i um i, I remember the very first time i got the idea of the, to maybe make a wall i thought i'm gonna try to make a wall or something and so i made a test brick and so i just made this little brick out of mud and and i let it dry and i was it was in the summertime it dried very fast and i was amazed how strong it was it was really hard and like i could break it you know by throwing it on a rock but that was like that's pretty good and so um i mean i, I just tested that by myself and, and figured it out the clay again i was doing a lot of research trying to figure it out i knew the concept but i i didn't know how to make it successfully i was having problems it was always cracking or breaking and stuff and it just took a lot of trial and error it took a lot of trial and error. It had to have just the right kind of uh, amount of moisture uh, or wetness uh, or dryness because actually I was making it with too much water in the beginning. And so it had to be drier and, and that made the big difference. But I, I didn't learn that from, from reading or anything because nothing really indicated that. I, it was trial and error. And uh, I've had similar experiences uh, with fire making with certain materials. Um, uh, one material that I found that works very, very well is a tree that grows in tropical areas and it's called, um, well in English they call it gumbo limbo. In Mexico it's called palo, palo mulato. And I just happened to, like once in a while I'll just collect a branch from somewhere and take it home and do something with it. And, <laughs> and I did that, I took this little piece and I thought I would try to make a fire with it using the Bodrum method. And I was amazed. It produced a, an ember super fast. And I'm like, wow. And I did it again and then again. And like, this is a good, good material. And I, I, that was something I just, by experimenting, you just try. And if you think about it, that's how everything, all the technologies that we have now today, it all began with by people that were trying different things. They get an idea, a thought, and they would try it. A lot of times we don't try things. And this is how I was most of my life. I would get ideas, but I wouldn't put it into action. I wouldn't even try most of the time. And I just wonder, so I could have advanced so much more, done so much more if I would just have tried. So I've learned to just try. I mean, making mistakes is definitely, it's definitely the pathway to success because if you don't make mistakes, then you're not gonna make anything right either. You know, so, so there's that. And um, making the, the roof for my hut, I had no clue how to do that. That was a big problem. And I was doing so much research. I was looking up information. I was checking YouTube for videos, looking blogs, um, looking into books. I couldn't find anything that would really, anything like concrete that would give me a clear way to make the roof. So I had to invent it. And I didn't know that it would work. I was kind of doubtful. But I, all the ideas that I had, I figured this was probably the best. So. I went ahead and tried it and it's worked. I mean, it's been up for over a year now and there's no sign of it even bending or, you know, collapsing at all. It's, it's the same height as, as when I first put it up and it's so super simple, so easy.